What's up guys, Ivan here from 239 Junk Rural out here in Lee and Collier County. Today I want to go ahead and walk you through the setup I have for my junk removal operation. Uh, primarily the tools I use, the two trailers I have, as well as the pickup truck that pulls it all. This is a 2015 Toyota Tundra SR5. This is the 4x4 5.7 liter V8 monster that is able to pull up to about 10,000 pounds. Great pickup truck. I've had no problems with it for the last few, uh, few months that I had it. I easily put on about 3,000 miles a month on it. Great truck. I recommend it. As you can see right here, these aren't the full back doors, and that is because this truck comes with a longer bed. The bed is also lined with heavy-duty liner. Uh, this is either Rhino lining or something similar. Very rugged. Essentially, just feel like you're putting your hand across concrete. I put fridges back there, other heavy items, and it never even chipped once. For the main trailer, this is a 2021 year model 6x12 dump trailer. Um, this of course came with the 24 inch 2 foot sides. I built up another set of 24 inch sides to make a total of about 4 feet. I would say probably about 4.5 feet. Great dump trailer, I've had no problems with it whatsoever. With an occasional battery dying, I'd have to of course use a battery tender to uh, charge it up now and then, but otherwise great dump trailer let's walk around here and I'll show you what we have of course this is about a half day of work not a very busy day today just a few items here but the trailer handles all the weight very well jump into the other trailer this is a 2020 triple crown 6x12 utility trailer as you can see it's not a very active trailer however I do use it from time to time this is the trailer that I started with and now use primarily for recycling metals. It has the very nice easy access tailgate. A very different uh, setup than the other dump trailer. Here's all my metals right here as you can see. Just a little more and I'll make a scrap run. Now that you saw the trailers and the vehicle I use, let's dive into the tools. Starting with, of course, the power tools. Let's get a wider look. We got, first of all, the Ryobi power drill. We got another one right here. This is a Craftsman. I bought this one at Ace Hardware. Got this one for free. Great power drills that work just fine. I have drill bits and uh, other bits inside the truck. Battery lasts quite a while. I use this one more often than not because I have multiple batteries for the Ryobi. I, I, I have three of these. And of course this battery is interchangeable with this electric Saza and this electric leaf blower. Now speaking of these other tools right here, uh, this I got both also at the junk job. They were great. The Saza is great for light to medium duty cutting. Battery doesn't last very long when in use. Uh, of course, the Ryobi leaf blower lasts quite a bit longer. It's actually pretty good for light to medium types of cleanups. Again, that's why I have multiple batteries, so I can alternate frequently, so I always have a battery on tap. Going over here, which looks like another Ryobi tool, but it's not. This is the Snow Joe 24-volt <laughs> um, portable tire compressor. Essentially, you can pump up your tires, you can uh, take off the battery, charge it. It's fully charged, as you can see. And uh, it's great for the trailer and for the truck in those events when I get nails. Of course, this is a temporary fix, but it's nice to have a can of tire sealant and, you know, or you can call it fix a flat. This is a must. Going, going over here to the more heavy-duty tool, this is the Craftsman Sawzaw, uh, far more powerful than the Ryobi one, of course, because it's corded. Uh, this is what I use for hot tubs and uh, things that are more difficult to cut, like the more most recent job I had, which was a chicken coop in somebody's backyard. It was all pressure-treated lumber, and it was very, very heavy 
uh, chicken coop. It took a lot of cuts and a lot of time to take it apart, but this thing took it like a champ. Actually, this is a pretty recent tool. That's probably maybe why it's, it held up pretty well. Before this, I had a Ryobi corded Saza, which worked pretty well as well. But the weak point for that drill was right here, and this actually snapped off. Uh, from what I can see here, this doesn't seem to be as weak or as as fragile as the other one. So, yeah, that's pretty much it for the electric tools. Let's jump over to the the hand tools. You know, we got our hammer, 28 ounce, great for taking nails out, taking small to, small things down. You know, like like say for example. Uh, uh, shelves and other kind of uh, furniture and this right here is oh boy it takes a bit of a angle or momentum to pick this up this is three times more heavy four times more heavy than this hammer right here but it's meant to take things and things down um, without much of a problem as you can see this part is that where what I use primarily to uh, tear down big shelves big armoires um, anything that is made out of wood usually I just give it a nice wide swing and I will either break right through it or or actually crack uh, some part of the of the item and I can take it down a lot easier so yeah this is also really good and of course let's not forget I use this part too to uh, cut things down where necessary this right here is a backup saw for you know just like uh, PVC pipes uh, other items you know more like metal uh, as you can see, that has a fine teeth on it. Um, it's a backup saw. Works. I've only used it a couple times, but it definitely helps. Jumping down here to the extension cord. I believe this is at least 100 feet long. I never really counted it because I never had to uh, pull it out all the way. But I use this for the sawzaw and any other electric uh, tool I use. As well as shop back, which actually is in the garage, over there. I don't really, I don't usually carry the shop back with me, but um, because usually I can just sweep things up um, with these brooms right here and put everything either in a in a trash bin or in the trailer or somewhere else. Speaking of sweeping things up, we got a regular light duty broom, and we got a more heavy duty broom. Right here, we've got a rake, which works really well for leaves, gravel, and other things to collect. And of course, we got an aluminum shovel. As you can see, it's a pretty big shovel. Helps to pick things up like dirt, gravel, sand, anything else, nasty things around the dumpster. And, you know, put, put those things either inside the trailer or inside the trash bin. And of course, this is the main trash bin that I use. It has wheels, so it definitely helps. And by the way, those wheels are really nice uh, they roll the, the the trash bin rolls really easy they are rubber so they definitely definitely have some grip and so far as you can see it's, it's put up with a lot of abuse but it's holding up really well at the bottom there's a little hole that lets water drain out I didn't put that there I think somebody else did I got this for free at a junk job so I'll take it even with the hole. These straps right here are what I use for the uh, strapping down of this tarp. You know, this uh, 6 by 14 mesh tarp, nylon mesh tarp. Uh, great for loads that are that go above the, the sides here. Uh, that happens on a pretty regular basis. That helps me get on the highway and get to my next job or home quicker. Um, of course, they, these straps vary from rubber to nylon, and um, overall, they work really well, and I can never get enough of them. Uh, usually, the more I get, the more I lose, so they tend, I tend to stay at around seven to eight, what do you call it, seven to eight um, straps at all time, so if I can find a way to uh, hang on to these a bit more, um, I'd probably have... You know, upwards of 12 to 13 straps on a regular basis. So, again, you can I can never get enough of those. So those are crucial. And of course, you can't do junk removal, removal without um without having a hand truck. And this is definitely my original hand truck. Got this on Amazon 
for about $100. Great hand truck. Holds up pretty well, although it is mostly plastic and is definitely showing its weaknesses in many parts. Um, overall, this is good uh, to you know, put things on top of and use all the four wheels to roll it around. The other hand truck I have is a lot more heavy duty. This is the heavy duty hand truck that I use for our fridges and other really heavy items. Um, I've had this for about seven months now. Uh, as you can see, it's definitely been put up through some hell. The things that are really hard to bend have been bent in most parts of this hand truck. You know, the axle down there is bent. I never thought that would be possible, but it is. Uh, certain parts of this hand truck are also, you know, damaged. Uh, but it's still holding up really well. You can see that wheel right there is crooked a little bit, like I said, from the axle. Uh, but no, it's holding up really well. It goes into multiple positions. I'm going to show you right now. This is the first position. Like this. And then you can fold it down. And it goes flat, just like that one over there. However, as long as you keep it pretty flat on the ground, you, you can move it around real easy. Just that nothing here latches in place, you can easily lift this up and it'll become undone. So that's a bit of a downside. But otherwise, these two are great. This one being, of course, three times heavier than the other one. So when possible, I'll try to use the other hand truck um, because it is pretty much, <laughs> you can operate it with one hand, you can lift it up with one hand. Look at that, easy. This other one, easily 60, 70 pounds. So that's pretty much my whole entire setup and my tools. If you're a drunk caller and you're watching this, uh, is there something I missed? Is there some tools that I should have that I'm not aware of? Let me know down in the comment box below. Um, if you're a person who's looking for junk removal and you live somewhere in Lee or Collier County and you need a free estimate, uh, give me a call or text me. My name's Ivan. My phone number is 239-330-5544. I provide free estimates to anybody who inquires. Just send me some photos or give me an address to go to and I'll check it out. And aside from that, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.